What's up guys, Creighton here from LogicLounge.com. Today was WWDC 2012. It was the kickoff with the keynote and amazing announcements from Tim Cook and all of his employees over there at Apple. And so we're gonna talk about all of the main features that have come out of WWDC. Giving you a quick overview, there was a ton of updates, especially for the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and even a new computer called the Next Generation MacBook Pro, as well as we learn more about OS X Mountain Lion and iOS 6. So let's dive right in to everything that came out of Apple today. All right, starting off with the MacBook Pro, we saw some new versions there, uh, some major updates, as well as the depletion of one of the MacBook Pros. There is no longer the 17-inch MacBook Pro. There's only the 13 and 15 inches of the MacBook Pro as well. The MacBook Pros have been majorly updated through this version, especially with the Ivy Bridge Core i7 processor that is now found standard in all of the MacBook Pros. Those start off at 2.7 gigahertz and go all the way up to 3.6 gigahertz when you get into the turbo boost range. As well, they come standard with eight gigs of RAM and can be upgraded to 16 gigs. The graphics cards are no longer AMD, they're actually Nvidia and they get a maximum of one gigabyte on their new 650M graphics. That should be great for those people who love doing video editing. We also see new ports on the MacBook Pros as well, including USB 3.0 as well as updates to the Thunderbolt port, which is the same, they've just made some internal changes. The baseline MacBook Pros start at $17.99 and work up to $21.99 for the upper end models. That goes same through for the 13 inch MacBook Pros as well, which start off at $11.99 and go all the way up to $14.99 with standard graphics, just like you would find in the 15 inch. Now let's go over and talk about the MacBook Airs. We also got a huge update on the MacBook Airs as well. They were updated with their graphics cards as well as their standard Core i7 Ivy Bridge cards as well with up to 512 gigabytes of SSD memory in there, which they call flash memory, with a standard of four gigs of RAM, which goes up to eight gigs of RAM as well. It comes with 720p FaceTime cameras, which are found both in the MacBook Pros and the MacBook Airs. Overall, Apple boasts a 60% better graphics rating through all of their systems. Now we're gonna talk about the new computer that came out of WWDC. Apple released a new line of computers called the Next Generation MacBook Pros. Those comes with Retina displays, which are magnificent and are somewhere around 240 something by something. It was some ridiculous number and it is Retina display at about 220 pixels per inch. It is runs on the quad core Ivy Bridge processor starting at 2.8 and turbo boosted up to 3.7. It comes with up to 16 gigs of RAM that can be installed inside of the computer with up to 768 gigabyte SSD uh, memory as well, which is all soldered to the board, so it's all proprietary. There is no optical drives, and there are new fan technologies being in place to make them quieter and more efficient at moving air. As well as that, the seven-day bat, the seven-hour battery life is still intact with a 30-day standby mode. We also saw uh, an SD card slot, a HDMI and USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports, as well, as well as dual Thunderbolt ports as well that run proprietary systems such as Ethernet or display ports or stuff like that. MacBook Pro, the new MacBook Pro, also features a dual microphone setup for stereo sound, which would be better for noise cancelization. They've put the best speakers ever that Apple claims into this new MacBook Pro. Now we're gonna head off and talk about OS X Mountain Lion. That's the new generation of OS X. And Mountain Lion is sure to have some great features starting off with it will be released in July for only $19.99 found in the Mac App Store. They did not send a specific date for July, but we're aiming for probably mid to later July when Mountain Lion is ready. The developer preview is ready for those of you who are Mac developers and can access that and start developing on the platform. The MacBook Pros also have enhanced apps as well as PowerNap, 
which basically lets your computer stay up to date and in sync while it's asleep, and that's called power nap. There is also dictation, which is Siri-like, that you can use to compose tweets and even use with Microsoft Word to dictate multiple things. They also have enhanced airplay as well. You can send your desktop display directly to your Apple TV with no third-party software, which is very nice. As well as we've gotten some updated to iCloud as well. iCloud got a huge update and is going to get a huge update when iOS 6 and Mountain Lion roll out finally. Notification Center is also in uh, there as well, and you can use that to dictate messages as well as see everything that's popped up. It has its own notification center. Uh, so they're really taking the iOS 6 approach inside of Mountain Lion. Everything does have Retina display compatibility as well. You'll see that with Aperture, Final Cut Pro, uh, a lot of applications that you do use that are from Apple inside the Mac will be Retina display optimized as well as there's an update to Safari as well that gives it a more iOS-like feel with tabs, navigations. Uh, they have syncing of Safari tabs as well. So if you're someone who has multiple Macs or maybe want to maybe sync your iPad uh, tabs from Safari to your uh, Mac, you can do that as well. So that is a new feature added there as well. And all this is set out to be in July. So we'll have more information on that when it becomes available. Last up, we're going to talk about iOS 6. This is the mobile operating system found on iPads and iPhones and brings a lot of the same features that we will find in Mountain Lion. Uh, it has more Siri enhancements. Uh, Siri can now recognize multiple things such as knowing the sports, uh, knowing movie theaters, finding places to eat. So she's being advanced even more inside of everything that Apple has to offer with Siri as well as China and Korea are getting huge updates as well with languages and local searching over there in the foreign markets. Uh, Facebook integration has finally come to iOS 6 and that Facebook integration will include Facebook, it will uh, include sending messages via the notification center, it will send a lot of things that you will find like Twitter inside of iOS. There's also a do not disturb feature where you can set your phone to not let any calls through before or after a certain time and you can also set exception lists and times that will happen so that's very nice as well uh, they have brought in more integration with the ios apple id and your phone number to be able to call your mac or call your ipad if someone tries to call your phone number as well as there's been more safari updates as well with tab syncing uh, favorite syncing history syncing so it brings a more synchronized view inside of it as well. We also have stuff called shared photo streams, which you can share your selected photo streams with someone or uh, to a group of people, which should be very nice. Mail is also getting a huge update as well on there to give it a more uh, OS X-esque feel to it. And that should be uh, thrown, shown throughout Mountain Lion and your iOS to give you one seamless experience. We also have Passbook, which is a uh, service that uh, will basically act as your credit card. So you can use it to pay. You'll probably be using near field uh, NFS devices uh, to pay for maybe movies or uh, the, the groceries or stuff like that. So you can use your iPhone to pay more than you can on your, uh, your cards as well. Another huge update is through Maps. Maps got a gigantic update and now uses 3D Maps and has ditched Google Maps altogether. So now we're using one seamless map interface uh, from Apple rather than Google. Next, we have Lost Mode. So if you do lose your iPhone, you can actually have it lock. And if someone finds it, they can call a number that you've predefined or you can send to the iPhone to let the person know who found it where you can pick it up at. So that's a very nice feature if you do lose your phone periodically. As well, uh, there's China specific features as well to integrate more with the, the China aspect of having the iPhone. And last but not least, there's Eyes Free, which is kind of like OnStar for your car, which major carriers will use uh, to be able to activate Siri while you're in the car hands free. So that should be a very nice feature. That does it for me. If you have any questions for me, email me, Creighton at logiclounge.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, 
all under the username of Logic Lounge as well. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment on this video. Let us know what you want to see in the upcoming Apple products. You can do that in the comment section below. Also click that subscribe button as well. It lets us know we're doing a good job and it supports us for what we do. So be sure to do all that and until our next video, we'll see you guys later.